everybody. This is Alan with Meet the Thriller Author. And on uh, Zoom, I have uh, Sebastian uh, Fitzek. Did I pronounce that right? Yes, you're totally right. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, he is one of Europe's most uh, successful authors of psychological thrillers. His books have sold over 12 million copies and translated into over 24 languages. Wow. Uh, his latest book, The Package, was published in November here in the States. Uh, welcome to the podcast, Sebastian. Thank you very much, Alan. Thank you very much. Uh, so can you tell us a little bit about your background, please? Well, um, to be honest, I never intended to be an author in the first place. I, I, I wanted to, to be a tennis player, but I, I found out that I'm not uh, as, as good enough uh, to, to do it. And, and then I wanted to, to um, be a musician and I played drums for, for 13 years, but I wasn't good enough there in it too. So um, uh, I, I, I studied law in Germany. Everybody studies law if they don't know what, what to do um, uh, after they got their um, the school finished. And um, well, on my way, um, I, I ended up as a program director of a, a, a private radio station. Uh, and all the time during um, these different stages, I always uh, was a big reader. Uh, reading is my, and thriller reading is my, my, my first hobby. So I, 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 once I, I decided, well, let's, let's try it by myself. Maybe have an have idea which is worth to put it on paper. So, um, and I was lucky that I wasn't the only one who liked it. Hmm. And so you were, so you were doing your, the, the regular job while you were writing your first book? Well, yeah, actually, I was um, uh, working at the radio station and I had to travel a lot because uh, there were several radio stations all across Germany and um, I was more the consultant. I didn't like it. Uh, I, I wanted to do something for my own and in all the uh, spare time on a plane or in a train or at the hotel, I started writing and um, then the hobby writing turned out to be my profession. Um, and radio uh, became just a hobby. And so, uh, what's the? Uh, what were some of the authors that you read that influenced you? Did you read uh, uh, American thriller writers, or what's the thriller like uh, books in uh, in Europe? Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm a child of the '80s, and, and um, I think so many uh, authors, even German authors, there were influenced by Stephen King because when I was 14, 15, 16 years old. I, I uh, read all these uh, page turners and, and uh, all through the night. And um, so I, I discovered the uh, American authors. Um, uh, for me, um, uh, one of, I was a big fan of uh, Michael Crichton, for example. Um, and uh, when I studied law, of course, I read all the um, big uh, uh, lawyer uh, uh, oh, yeah. Of, of course, like John Grisham and and, and, and every others, and um, later on, I, I became a fan of, of Harlan Cohen, who wasn't so, so famous uh, famous this time in, in Germany. Um, so yeah, I was uh, influenced by a lot of um, American authors and also films, to be honest. And uh, what's uh, what was your your uh, for, for your first book? When was that published? My first book was published in 2006 in, in Germany. Yeah. I wrote it between 2000 and 2002. It took me then two years to find a publisher. And they, um, yeah, they needed two more years to find the right slot. Uh, um, so in 2006, it was a very uh, low amount of, of copies, um, like uh, I think it's about 3,000 copies uh, all over Germany. But then it, it Got good reviews, good ratings, and um, well, yeah, a little hype um, came out of nowhere, and I was very lucky um, that uh, the first book became a bestseller. Not very high on the list, but um, it um, it was it was a success, so I was lucky to to, to continue. Hmm. And what's your writing style like? For uh, if listeners haven't read your stuff before, what's your style like? Yeah, maybe maybe to quote um, uh, Stephen King, he you wrote a book obviously you know about about writing and um, and and he said there are more two two different types of thriller authors like like one is um, like the speedboat uh, you jump in and it starts right ahead and the other is more like a cruise ship and um, uh, it needs a little bit of time but when the big ship is on the ocean then you can't stop it. And um, well, I, I think I'm more like a, a speedboat writer. I like it when it really um, 
jumps in um, and um, I, I, I'm very interested in um, uh, how do normal people react on weird situations which are not trained uh, to survive. So I'm not a, um, uh, like, like I, I don't uh, like investigate, I don't write, invest I like them, but I don't, I don't write them. Um, investigation stuff like, um, like a police series, um, they're more standalones and there is, um, and there is, um, the question, what if something like this would happen to you? How would you react? And um, yeah, so uh, it's, it's, it's more fast paced. Yeah, I really like the, the premise of your book. The, your latest book is, is The Package. And <laughs> basically somebody receives a, a package and it kind of goes from there. That's, that's a really a neat concept. Can you tell us about your latest book? Um, I, I live in a very small street and um, for years and I, I thought I knew everyone uh, in the street and uh, but once uh, out of a sudden the, the, uh, the um, like a mailman asked me to take a package for a neighbor and the name on the package uh, I, I didn't know which neighbor this could be and I, I was instantly thinking okay this could be a great idea for a thriller yeah like um is it an evil package or a weird neighbor or is there a special reason why I received this package? So I start thinking about this. And, um, and so the idea for the package was born and in the package, the book, um, you have a, a victim, Emma Stein. She, um, uh, she was a victim um, and somebody really did a cruel thing to her in a hotel room. And, 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 and the, the story starts when, um, she is like uh, paranoid. She's a psychiatrist by herself. She knows all the symptoms that she's paranoid um, because she fears that the, the guy who really um, raped and hurt her in the hotel room would come again. Um, and she doesn't live the home. She lives in a very small street. She knows every neighbor. She gets everything delivered. And um, out of a sudden, the mailman asks her to take a package. And she doesn't know for, for which neighbor. And so, so she doesn't know, is she paranoid? Or will she let the evil into her home um, uh, with this package? So this is um, the premise of the book. That's great. What's the, what's the process now? Because you write your books in German and then it gets translated into English. Do you, is that, is that you, are you involved in that process? Or do you, do, do, how does that well, work? I, I'm curious about that. To, to be honest, I... Um, I'm not, um, I think you have to be a native speaker to, to understand, have a feeling if the translation, even if the translation is good or not. I, I couldn't translate my, my books. I'm, I'm um, glad that I have a, a, a great translator, but um, I, I wouldn't be um, able really to be part of the process. Sometimes, I mean, sometimes, um, the translator um, is, is involved um, because there are, of course, uh, I mean, my, my thrillers, they can take, I think, place all over the world. They're not typical German or typical Berlin thrillers um, because they have psychological thrillers. But sometimes um, there, was, there, was, there, there was an audio play of one of my book. Um, it, it, it's called The Child. And uh, it was available in Amer uh, America and um, it, was, uh, it was an audible success. <laughs> and and um, I got some reviews and, we, um, and they were uh, said that this author is totally uh, insane. Um, uh, who on earth can think about this? Uh, because I wrote about a mother giving her away her, her baby and uh, dropping it at a hospital, and there is like um, like a like a like a door. Um, you can push it through and uh, through this door, and and we call it baby klappe. And and they said, what is he thinking about? The fact is, it really exists in Germany. So you really have because they don't want uh, uh, the mothers or fathers to put the baby somewhere um, and to let it die. So you can bring it to the hospital anonymously, and you can really push it like a parcel through, like, like through a cat door. Maybe it's like <laughs> like the same system. So so they were thinking I was insane, and, and then and then other people were, were writing, no, no, it really exists in Germany, and then say, oh, the Germans, they are insane. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually. 
idea and it saves it saves lives. Yeah, no, it's a great idea. And they're actually starting to do that here now in the in the states. Oh, okay. uh, in, in California, they have anonymous just drop it off and walk away oh. in the fire okay station. so so they weren't used to it maybe i don't know on the east coast i don't know if they they mm -hmm. were used to it so so sometimes it's necessary to talk to a translator if this really happening or not and what, <laughs> what do you mean by this so so but these are just questions once in a while when they pop up so but not i'm, I'm not involved in the um, art of translating yeah, it's kind of like a, the audiobooks. You, don't, you want a professional to narrate your audiobooks. You don't want to read your own audiobooks. <laughs> that's, right. that's right. Even if you have a good voice. Because, I, yeah. I mean, I, I worked uh, at a radio station and um, I never was a DJ. But once in a while, I could uh, well, read the news or something like this. But um, there's even one more aspect. I, every time um, the author, a lot of authors, they want to read their own audiobooks. I don't know why, but I always keep telling them no. Um, one part of my success in Germany and Europe was that um, uh, by, uh, like, like, it was by accident, I, um, the, the company chose uh, somebody who was already known so he had his own fan, uh, fan base mm -hmm. which is which is perfect i mean nobody heard about about me like like now nobody really um, know, knows me um uh, in the us but um maybe the speaker of an audiobook so this could open up and get a little bit more attention uh, attention yeah yeah from a, from a marketing perspective it makes sense to uh, to go with somebody and just know totally, totally. <laughs> Yeah. Even even this, and and they do a better job. When they translate, uh, 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 trained actors, they do a great job. Yeah. And so, what's your? I'm curious about your writing process. Do you like when you start writing your books? Do you have like a? Uh, do you outline, or do you just kind of start writing it like a? You no, kind of start writing? I have an outline. It's not uh, like uh, some other authors. I know they have 200, 300 pages for a four hundred pages book. They have. They know everything. This uh, would be too boring for me because when I have 200 pages outlined, the whole story would be told and it would be only work to write it and I wouldn't do it because I'm, then I'm a lazy guy. But um, I have 20 pages and I, I, I think I knew all the story and then I started after 80 pages, my, on page number 80 when I, I'm writing, um, then usually the characters, they start to get their own life and um, more like, uh, um, 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 uh, not, not a visitor, I, I, just, I just watch them, I like, more like a watcher, um, how do they uh, react? And then they change the story. So I know that the book, when it's finished, uh, sometimes um, it's completely different to what I thought um, and what, what was written in my outline. And what's your typical writing day like? Do you write every day, or do, are you always working on a on a new project? Um, well, it's um, I, I'm always thinking about something, <laughs> <laughs> but I, I wouldn't consider it working uh, every day. But there is a a period of time, um, three or four months for the first draft. There I work every day, and I start as like a usual working routine at 9 a.m. in the morning and I start to write as much as I can, even if I know that it might be as good enough to, to stay in the last draft. Um, but I need to have um, a first draft and I know that the first draft, like Hemingway said, the first draft is always crap. Yeah, it is. And maybe the second or third too. So this, the, then the process of rewriting um, starts and I've got, uh, of course, I've got editors um, uh, at my publisher, and they um, they keep asking questions when they're read it. So there's there's spare time between uh, in between. I can do other things. I can, of course, do private things, or I can do research on other topics. I never write uh, on two stories at the same time. Maybe I think about, or I make some remarks, or. Um, uh, or write over something, but I, I never have two projects um, um, at the same time. And kind of curious, I always ask my guests what, what they use to write their books with. Do you use like Word or some other software program? Well, you, you know, because um, I, I started, you know, everything started when I was sitting at a, at a, a waiting room. Mm -hmm. um, at, uh, and I waited for my former girlfriend, and it was in 2000, so it's 20 years ago. I waited for her to come out um, out of the practice room, um, 
but after one hour, she was still in there, um, obviously with a lot other patients and they moved from room to room till they finally got to see the doctor. But I was thinking, okay, well, what if everybody is telling me um, she went never in there, she had no appointment, I'm, you're alone there and I would never see her again. And this was no wishful thinking, this, this was the first thriller I hear. And in my very first book, Therapy, um, uh, there is a, a father and he brings a, a, his daughter to um, a doctor and they want to, and they tell him that she never uh, um, went in there. And um, so this was, were the first pages. And the impulse I got on this day, by the way, she came out <laughs> the impulse in real life, um, uh, made me start instantly ex without an expose, without a, um, an outline, which was not so good because this took them longer. Um, and I, of course, I didn't bought a writing program or anything. I, I started with Word. And um, the only thing I do with Word is, and I'm still using it, is um, that um, I, I have a format so that one page is almost, or almost one book page, because then you, you, you get the feeling that you, you, you wrote a lot of pages. <laughs> Mm, yeah. um, this is this is this is mo much better than having having like the usual word form um, and and you think oh I wrote two pages no it's four <laughs> <laughs> or three and a half so um, I formatted it to make it look better and to give me a better feeling I think this is the best advice to have if you have a, uh, a, a, a how do you say blockada we say blockada like a, like, a yeah, uh, like a writer's block yeah writer's block yeah you can't go any further. The good thing is just, man, well, yeah, just change the format and you have a feeling, well, yeah, you, you, you did a good job today. Yeah, that is, that's so true too. Cause yeah, I get that too. And then you go, you look at the, yeah, you look at it differently, like in a preview mode or something. And then you're like, oh, there you go. Hey, it looks nice. Yeah, 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 there yeah. you go. <laughs> right back at it. Yeah. <laughs> um, so um, I was kind of curious too, with the, everything with the pandemic, um, not sure how, how is that a, did that affect you at all? Did it make any changes to your writing? Or, I mean, we've always been self-isolating as writers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, and we are in, right now uh, in, a, in a lockdown too. Uh, you can see it, usually my hair is yeah. a little bit. Um, <laughs> uh, and um, no, it's, it's uh, usually they say, ah, oh, you're a writer, you're used to uh, being isolated and lockdown is like daily routine for you, no. Um, I think we all need inspiration and uh, hopefully if you're an author for psychological thrillers, you don't get the inspiration at home. So um, it can happen when the parcel is coming to you in a package, but usually, um, I mean, um, you need to, to, to talk with people to get reactions and, um, and, and this is something that's really missing. And when the uh, first lockdown, we had a first lockdown in March, um, when this started, and I think the whole world was paralyzed, what, what is happening right now, um, this was not a very creative uh, uh, time for me because I was just, it, it, it reminded me a little bit of um, September 11th when I was only trying to get all the news everywhere and staring at computer, staring at the television or reading newspapers. Um, and, and I, uh, you were, it was a, it's the same. There's something coming and you wanted to have no, more information. It was a true life thriller and everyone was in, involved. Um, actually, this is something that um, I find, uh, found out um, that um, I think um, this is why I like uh, the what if question. This is why I like um, uh, to watch people. How do they react with unusual situations. I would have liked it if, if the pandemic would have been just fictional, that would have been enough. But, but now uh, the thing is what, what cruelty or, or even like a pandemic or the weird situation is, is doing to us, it's, um, it tears down the mask that we have away. And, um, and you, have, you, you see the inner core of people um, so if, if you are forced to do and to react instantly because there's a danger, you, you, you can't think, you, you act like you are. So uh, your, your inner truth come, comes out. And this is the same like the pandemic. I mean, people, some people, they, are, uh, they turn into conspiracy theorists. Uh, some people, they get aggressive, some passive, some use it for their political um, 
uh, and then they put their fortune, they, they make money with it, or, or, or they commit suicide. It's, it's, it's like a, it, it changes the, the um, yeah, there comes something from the outside and it changes uh, uh, us. And I think this is, this is a true core of a thriller. So it makes, makes it interesting. It made, made it interesting to watch. But I, I, I had so many, um, I, I lost so many hours just watching the news. Um, I really had to say, no, 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 come. Get rid of it. You have to concentrate, get back to work and, get, and, and do something else because you can't stare a paralyzed at, 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 at victim uh, data or um, at the virus. Yeah, that's true. And you, one day, next thing you know, you haven't written for a month. So yeah, it really, yeah. it really yeah. goes out of control. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I also noticed I was uh, when I was uh, looking at your website, you have another book uh, coming out here, uh, Passenger Twenty Three. In yeah, that's that's right. Passenger Twenty Three, which takes place on a cruise ship. I mean, a cruise ship have a hard time already. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but but um, I read an article, uh, and it was in two thousand eight. I read an article. Um, that um, an average 23 persons go missing on a cruise ship every year, not on one cruise ship, but on every cruise ship on, all over the world. And it was funny that um, in the US there were some law firms who are specialized on um, suing all these big uh, uh, ship uh, uh, companies um, because this is a multi-billion dollar business. And, um, and all the uh, ship owners they usually say um, this uh, when somebody's missing that he or she commits suicide. But some victims say, and, and the relatives say, no, that can't be. Um, and they try to, to prove it. On the other hand, uh, the owner of the ship, they don't want the ship to be an investigation place for the FBI. Um, uh, so, so there are... Um, uh, uh, but when I heard about this phenomenon, which led me to Patent Jet 23, um, I, I already wrote about people go, uh, gone missing, for example, in therapy, where this little child disappeared of the practice room. So I said, no, you don't want to write about this again. Um, then, and it was years later, I had the idea, no, no you don't write about somebody who disappears in a ship. You write about somebody where everybody saw, oh, they committed suicide, they were mother and daughter uh, together, they committed suicide. But then three months later, out of a sudden, the daughter appears again and proves the theory wrong that they were suicide, but she's totally um, paralyzed and shocked, that doesn't um, talk and the psychiatrist moves on the ship and has just uh, um, six days time to solve the riddle um, and, and the ship uh, goes from Southampton to New York, so the classic Titanic route. Uh, route. Oh. So uh, this is more or less what Passenger Pe Twenty Three is about. Oh, that's really cool. Okay, I love I love how your mind goes. So you, yeah, so it was in the mystery of what happened. She's there, so yeah. something yeah. happened to her. So the, it's trying to figure out what happened. So yeah, that's that's right. Yeah, great. Um, so um, so what are you working on next? Um, are your books usually do you, do you write series or are they usually all standalones? Um, they're usually series. I have only one series, um, like a mini series, um, because I, I had a character. She, uh, she's a blind uh, woman, a, a physiotherapist. She's uh, like giving massages to um, to people, and, and she was such an interesting character so that it led led me to to um, three books. I'm actually writing on the third, um, uh, but you can all every time you can read them as standalone as, as well. So I'm more standalone type of guy because um, I think it would be really, uh, I mean, I always put my characters in very strange situations. Mm -hmm. So it would be very strange if a psychiatrist in the first book receives a package and the second book, his, his daughter doesn't come out of the practice room. In the third book, he's on his cruise ship. So um, but even for trained readers, I think this <laughs> Could be a little bit too much. Yeah, I think that's why most psychological thrillers are standalones. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> and so, um, so you're working the, uh, so that's what you're working on now. You're working on that third book on that on that one. Um, yeah, I'm actually working on uh, on it and try to get the first 
uh, draft done, knowing that the uh, work is starting um, with the, when I had the first draft. But I have a better feeling if I know uh, I, I had the first big move is it's already done. Mm. And your books, do your books first get published in Germany and Europe before they come to the States or are they kind of like at the same time? Um, I, I actually, it's, I mean, really, to be honest, um, you're blessed with so many male and female crime, suspense and thriller authors in the States. Uh, you, you, nobody's waiting for a German author. Um, I have to admit, I don't feel like a German author because I'm a born Berliner and born Berliners always, they think, well, we don't belong to Germany, we belong to Berlin and it's different. Um, but you don't wait even for a Berlin uh, author. So um, um, I'm glad if you, uh, and if anyone give, would give me a, a try anyway, but it's already a big honor that I'm um, published at all. Uh, in your uh, country, um, I think we, which I consider uh, being the home of the of the thriller and the psychological uh, thriller, and and uh, and again, it's um, it's is difficult for um, uh, foreign authors in the U.S., uh, especially for German authors, because uh, there are not not so many German-speaking editors at the publishing houses, mm -hmm. so. Um, and, and then you have to be lucky really to persuade this one person <laughs> who really can read your book. And, and he or she really had a hard job to um, promote it uh, in, the, in the conference when nobody is able really to. But I, that's why um, uh, um, there are a lot of translations being made um, so that a lot of people can read it at the publishing house. And now we're going um, uh, to release some um, of my books, but it's a little bit behind um, than the European market. Yeah. Yeah. I, I know that's something that's happening here in the States where a lot of uh, they're having their books translated in, to Germany in other languages yeah. as well. So yeah, it's interesting. It's a little bit more easier. It's a little bit more easier um, uh, because um, um, it's still and I think it really is. It's still a quality sign if it uh, it says it's a bestseller for in the U.S. Mm. Yeah. It's for us. I mean, we're like like we grew up with uh, those kind of literature. It's very new that um, in Germany um, we have a, a crime. Um, a, 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 to give you one example, when I um, had my first draft finished of therapy, I send it in 2002 to 15 publishing houses in Germany, 13 rejected and two haven't answered it till now. So it was 100% who said no, but those who answered, they said, um, mm, uh, we don't see um, a market for a German author writing thrillers. So maybe you change your name into an American name, then it could work in Germany. Well, this was, um, this was like the advice they gave us. And this is a little bit changing in, in, in Germany. You see a lot of German authors on the German best-selling list. Um, but this wasn't um, very common. And still in, in movies and in a cinema, a lot of people say, well, no, I don't pay for a German movie in the cinema. Um, it has to be an American movie, at least a British movie. But uh, because they know what to do, um, this is changing, but it's changing more slowly than uh, it's changing in the book market. That's so interesting. Uh, so uh, any, uh, before I let you go, know, any advice for, because uh, we have some aspiring writers that listen to this uh, podcast and you have had a lot of experience. Any advice you have for writers? Um, well, um, it really depends on what, which stage they are. If they are um, beginners and they're trying to, to find uh, a publisher uh, with, their, with their first book, um, then uh, my, my advice, and this is my advice, which I learned from writing thrillers, is like to consider yourself as being a hero of your, of your story of your life. Which means, um, because after I received 15 rejections, I was asking myself, if I would write a book about a guy who tries 
to be published and to he tries to, to write a bestseller. What would the book be about? Would the hero in this book send it to a publishing house? They say, well, this is exactly what we wanted. We, we gave you $2 million in advance and, um, and there's the film rights we sell to Warner. I think this is really unreal and it's a boring story. The true story is um, you send it to 15 publishing houses, everyone rejects, nobody wants to have it. Only one says, okay, come. But on this day, when you come, um, you miss the bus and your car doesn't work and it's raining and you get too late. And uh, in the middle process of, of the signing, the old uh, guy uh, at the publishing house uh, gets a heart attack, he can't sign the contract. I mean, this would be something what was happening in your, in your uh, novel. And we like this because it's realistic that there are so many, um, uh, yeah, uh, disadvantages, so many rejections that you get, and this helps sometimes. If you if you don't you don't find a publisher, if you are not being published, or if it only prints a, sl a low amount of copy, or if you get a bad review, this is exactly what your hero would. Um, uh, uh, yeah, but that, what would the life of your hero in a book, in a fictional book, would be about? So, and then try to think what, what would you make your hero do then to achieve the goal in the end? I think this is a motivational um, uh, thing um, because in the end, everything is about to, to keep going um, and uh, don't, uh, don't, don't to get angry or to, to lose your, the nerve. Um, and to stop too early. Uh, this is, I think the most unwritten books, unpublished book, they, they stopped too early. Yeah, yeah, it's a long haul, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right, um, and so where can the, our listeners find you? Do you have a, a website? Um, are you on Facebook, Twitter, yeah, all that stuff? So, so, so my name is like Sebastian Fitzek, and it's like SebastianFitzek.com. There's an English website, but you also find me on Instagram and on Facebook. They've got this translation um, button, so um, I would be happy if you just... Um, check it out and, and give me a try and, um, and, and just neglect that I'm, that I'm brilliant. So. Sounds good. Yeah. Your books, uh, uh, I haven't finished the package, but it's, it's been a great read so far. And I saw you, you had a great blur from Harlan Coben. He said, Fitz, Fitz uh, thrillers are breathtaking, full of twists, wild twist. That must've been pretty thrilling to get a, a blur from him. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, really, uh, thrilling. And, um, uh, I, um, uh, I'm very blessed that I met him uh, twice, and uh, I know I was a big, big fan. And I was, I was lucky that um, in Germany, all the time they asked me, "Oh, could you give an advice? Who, um, uh, who do you recommend um, for for a good read?" And and nobody knew him um, uh, really. But then um, I was really lucky that I could, could recommend him. And but now he's number one in Germany too, and paperback so. He doesn't need my, my recommendation anymore. <laughs> All right, Sebastian. Well, thank you so much for being on the podcast. Really enjoyed talking to you. And, uh, thank you very much. It was a pleasure. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.